Am I wrong for telling my sister she's responsible for her life and our parents owe her nothing? I, 42 male, have a sister, Sarah, 33 female. Growing up, our dad had his own small business and mom was an office manager. We lived a comfortable life but was not rich by any means. Our parents told us that they will pay for our four-year degree in grad school should we decide to go. They made it clear that the money is for school only and not just free money. They stressed that if we decide not to go to school, they're not giving us the money for a house or anything. They said they worked hard for their money so they're going to retire early and enjoy their lives together. Once they pass, we'll get whatever is left, but we should expect nothing because they're really going to enjoy their lives. Does it sound harsh? Yes. Is it reasonable and fair? I think so. They were setting us up for life as adults and growing up, I saw how much they sacrificed for us. I truly believe they deserve to enjoy the last half of their lives as they see fit. I'm okay with receiving nothing. That is because I make a decent living as an electrical engineer with an MBA, and my wife is an attorney. We're doing well. Sarah on the other hand, is not doing so well. She didn't listen to my parents and decided she wanted to travel after high school and not go to college. She asked our parents to fund her traveling but they refused, and told her she's 18 and can earn her own traveling money. She moved to the West Coast and went no contact for a while from all of us until about three years ago when she moved back into our lives, but we're not close. About two years ago, she asked my parents for money to put down on a house because she's tired of renting, but they refused. They said their offer to pay for a four-year degree in grad school still stands, but they're not paying for anything else. She complained to me, but I agreed with my parents and told her it's not too late to get a degree and a better paying job. She didn't like my answer and went low contact. This brings us up to our current situation. Next year is a major anniversary for my grandparents who live in another country. My family and my parents are going there to celebrate along with family members from all over the world. This will be a huge family gathering with people from all over the world flying in, and we're all excited to go. However, it's an expensive trip, and it will cost about $20,000 for my family, me, wife, two kids. Sarah is married with no kids, but she can't afford to go, so she asked our parents to pay for her and the husband to go. They again refused and said they'll still pay for her college, at which point she blew up at them. She called me to complain about how they're living in a crappy apartment, driving barely working cars and have no savings, and our parents refused to help. I told her she made choices in her life and she's responsible for it. I said our parents are incredibly generous to still offer to pay for her college and it's still not too late. She hung up and I think we're about to go back to no contact. Am I wrong for taking this stance? Now for the top comments. Not wrong. Sister was given a choice slash chance to improve herself in life, but keeps deciding to try her luck and mooch off. Like, they are still offering to help her in a tremendous and meaningful way. A full ride through grad school would radically change her life. Not wrong. Not everyone excels in college. She could take the money, go to college and leave with an expensive art degree, and still be exactly where she started. OP and his parents are not wrong, but I'm curious if something more like a trade school would benefit the sister. There are other schooling options than a four-year degree in grad school that could help. It doesn't sound like she's tried to negotiate anything about schooling. I would interpret paying for a four-year degree in grad school as willing to pay for education and at least ask if going to tech was on the table. Definitely not wrong. I freaking love your parents for setting boundaries and sticking with them. And good for you supporting your parents' decision and giving reasonable advice for your sister, although she might not want to hear it. Agreed. Their offer was clear and it was very generous. Exceptionally so since it's still on the table all these years later. The reality is, college, a trade school, certifications or some kind of training slash education beyond high school can greatly increase your earning potential. And she has been presented with a privilege that many dream about. At 18, she may have the excuse of being young, foolish and free, but at 33, she still seems to be looking for a handout. Unless there is something that I am missing here, that's on her. You're not wrong. She has been told multiple times what the deal is and still chooses to ask for money for other things. This may be harsh, but your sis blaming it all on them just proves the point that she is being entitled about it. If she had taken more ownership of her situation and not just ranted at all of you, I wonder if the parents would have at least been willing to help with the reunion trip. Hard to want to help someone that blames you for your poor choices. Next story. Am I the a-hole for threatening my husband to stop paying for him if he helped his sister? I, 34 female, have been married to my husband 33 male for 6 years now. We have 2 kids 4 male and 1 and a half female. I come from money and also make about 10 times what my husband does. 
When we first got together, I noticed that his family takes advantage of him financially. He is a very kind man and the perfect person to have as a partner and father. To get around the whole greedy family thing, I offered to pay everything when it comes to us. House, living expenses, medical expenses, vacations, clothing etc. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind if he wanted to be a stay-at-home dad, but he loves his job and I love to see him happy. Early on, some of his family tried to get money from me, but when I brought up a contract and a notary, they backed off. And now I'm considered to be that rich daughter-in-law who happens to be a cold witch. And honestly I don't care. My husband's whole salary ends up going to his family, paying almost everything for his parents. Somehow one of his siblings is always in an emergency or a cousin needs help with their business, even though they are all firmly middle class with good jobs. Before anyone asks when it is a true emergency, I always give money with no expectation of it being paid back. Now to the situation. We are visiting his family for Thanksgiving. We thought it better to go a few days earlier. They live in a mountain town and it is gorgeous this time of year. I rented us a cabin and paid for five first-class tickets, mine, his, the kids and the nannies. We arrive at the airport and surprise surprise, his sister just happens to be on the same flight. I call BS as it is obvious he told her when we would be going and she decided to get a ticket for the same flight. We greet her, then I hand the kids to the nanny and send her ahead to the lounge, because I had a feeling about what was about to come. Then sister-in-law has the audacity to ask me to upgrade her to first class so she can travel with her family. Kudos to my husband as he shut her down before I could. Then she goes and asks us to switch her ticket with our nannies. I told her point blank that I wouldn't be doing that. That my nanny is needed to help with the kids as I am useless on a plane because of nausea and the meds and my husband can't realistically be expected to take care of two kids on his own. She starts complaining and making a scene so I just turn around and start walking towards the lounge. My husband follows me about 10 minutes later. Apparently, he tried to pay for her ticket upgrade but it is a full flight. So, he tells me that he will be switching with her. Here's where I might be the a-hole. I told him that he knows I can't help the nanny during the flight, and if he was going to leave the poor woman to her devices just because his sister can't live within her means, then this will be the last time I will be paying for his tickets ever again. He texted his sister to tell her that apparently, he can't switch tickets with her, but he is pretty upset. So am I wrong? Edit. So this blew up. I expected a couple hundred judgments at most, but thank you everyone. And since most people seem to be hung up on it, when I said my husband can't be expected to take care of the kids on his own, I meant logistically, two rows of two seats with a wide gap between the seats and between the rows. Each kid who are four and one and a half, by the way, would need an adult to sit next to them. I am useless, can't even open my eyes because of the meds, so I usually need someone to help me. We are both perfectly happy and capable of taking care of our kids on our own in normal circumstances. You're definitely not in the wrong, and your husband is a major pushover when it comes to his entitled family. That he is, but he is a pushover when it comes to everyone. I am not kidding when I say that he gave the coat off of his back to a homeless kid once, and he almost froze before he got back home. One of the reasons why I love him. He does sound very kind and generous, and it's really unfortunate that it's often people like him who are seen as willing targets by others. It's one thing to be kind and generous, it's another to do so with other people's money. In this case, the ticket was purchased for him, he had no right to trade it with his sister. I had a friend slash roommate like that. She was just always so kind and thoughtful, except for when it came to considering the consequences of all that kindness and thoughtfulness to the people that actually cared about her. Oh, she gave all her money to a homeless man on the way to our friend's birthday party, and is now flat broke. How sweet. Of course we'll cover her at the bars even though she says it's fine, and obviously we're going to buy her a ticket home. Oh, she's working a bunch of hours because she volunteered to help children in underserved communities. How noble. We don't mind doing a couple extra chores when she's too exhausted to get to them. Oh, she paid for a bunch of stuff for her jerkwad boyfriend and now can't afford to come out ever. I guess she's a really great girlfriend at least. I guess I didn't need the whole six pack if she wants to pregame with us. Oh, she quit her high paying job with health insurance to work with disabled children. That's swell. What's that? She also has a bunch of medical expenses she knew were coming up, but forgot she might need health insurance for. Well, I guess it's a good thing her parents have some extra funds. While I genuinely don't think she was ever purposely manipulative, she'd constantly get caught up in the feel-good rush slash avoiding guilt that came with helping others to her own detriment, and never considered how it hurt her friends and loved ones to see her struggle from giving too much, or how much of her ability to be giving came from having a safety net of people willing to help her stay comfortable after. Next story.
Am I wrong for telling him that we live in poverty due to his poor choices? This was an all-time low for me as usually I'm the problem solver. I shouldn't have said it, but was I wrong in saying it? My husband and I both grew up in foster care and developed two completely different attitudes due to it. I'm humble, problem-solving, generally positive, and a glass-half-full type of woman. He is a life is out to get me, it will never get better, glass-half-empty type of man. Not always, so please don't take this as me bashing him. He has gotten better with the help he gets in therapy, but those moments where he collapses and goes back to his negativity is hard. He has a lot of good days now and things have been getting better, but recently he had a personality shift again. Now, back about a year ago, he got himself a dog. Her name is Josie and she is a healer slash dat shunt. I wasn't exactly in on this decision, but I wasn't surprised because he impulse buys or spends and generally doesn't think before acting when it comes to these impulses. Again, he's gotten better but it's still there. He wanted a dog in foster care and couldn't have one so now he has one. That's how he's seeing it. He didn't take into consideration her breed or temperament. She has a high prey drive and is nippy even with us sometimes. We have bent backwards trying to train her, but nothing appears to work. And now due to her prey drive, we are having a hard time being accepted into any other apartment or house and we are on the verge of eviction after a steep increase in rent. About $550 increase, so now we are paying $1,600 for a one-bedroom, nothing included. In the first month of him getting Josie, I begged him to rehome her. My foster mom was a dog trainer and I know a thing or two about training and temperaments and I knew that given Josie's breed, we were going to have troubles. He didn't listen because he didn't want to abandon the dog just like he had been abandoned. And now due to this, we can't find another place to live and we are slowly going completely broke paying rent here. We only have $26 to last us until next week and do not have rent money for next month. He started complaining real heavy yesterday and I will admit my tone and attitude was unlike me. He was saying he is sick of living in poverty and was tired of never having money and I have heard this far too many times. So, I told him we live in poverty because he made the poor choice of getting an aggressive dog with a high prey drive and refusing to rehome her because of his abandonment issues. We had a place lined up months ago who backed out due to the dog. Everyone else says we cannot bring the dog and we can't afford the other ones. He says I'm an idiot for making him feel awful for refusing to rehome his dog. I'm admittedly feeling pretty horrible for even saying it, but am I wrong? Now for the top comments. You are correct. Part of being an adult is taking responsibility for your own decisions and realizing that you can make choices that affect your present and your future. Your husband has a victim identity and cannot progress until he is out of it. When you are a child the world can be a dangerous place for some and he needs to get out of that space. Also, part of being a responsible pet owner is ensuring that you have the means to care for that pet. If they don't have money for rent that dog will be out on the street along with them. Rehoming the dog somewhere that has the space, training, and resources it needs is in the best interests of the dog and not the same as abandonment. This. What if the dog eats something dangerous and needs surgery? If it gets sick or hurt, they won't be able to afford to take care of it and already can't if they don't have money for rent. He should have never gotten a dog in his financial situation. He says he's sick of living in poverty but went out of his way to get a dog. Let's see. Common costs of owning a dog food and treats, toys, grooming, vet visits, annual shots, anti-flea, tick, heartworm meds, dental procedures, boarding if you're out of town etc. Oh yeah, and we're in the middle of an inflation crisis, so the cost for all of these is skyrocketing. Not wrong. Exactly this. Dogs are great to have, but they are a huge responsibility, not only financially. If OP is struggling to feed themselves, then I am concerned about the well-being of the dog. The dog deserves to be placed in a home that can cater to its needs. Last story. Am I wrong for putting my girlfriend's groceries back because she left the checkout right before it was our turn? Hey all. My girlfriend and I moved in together a few months back. It's been pretty good except for one issue. Whenever we go grocery shopping, she almost always wanders off when we get in line and doesn't come back until I've finished checking out. We're supposed to split the grocery bill, but those times I wind up paying for it all, it takes days or weeks for her to repay me or send me her portion. We did talk about finances before we moved in together as far as what each of us could afford and I have tried talking to her to see if maybe she was having money problems, that she couldn't afford as much groceries wise anymore, but she insists her money is fine and she just gets bored in the store. I definitely can't afford to keep footing our grocery bill on my own, so this last time we went grocery shopping, she wandered off when we were in line. And right before it was my turn, I tried calling her phone and she didn't answer. 
I tried again when the cashier started ringing up the items, and she still didn't answer, so I left all her items in the cart and wound up getting only the things we both needed and I wanted. She came back into the store after I had already finished and was sitting on a bench by the registers. She saw I had less groceries and asked where the rest of our items were, and I told her that hers were in the cart by the register and were going to be put back. I told her she could go have them rung up or not, but I was going to the car. My girlfriend got all her stuff and came out a few minutes later. She thinks I made a big deal out of nothing and should have just bought the items, and that she'd pay me back later like she usually does. She dropped it after the car ride home, but brought it up again last night when her friend was over and they've both been giving me grief. I don't think I was wrong, but I could kind of see their point. Am I? Nope. She knows what she's doing. If you have records of how long it took to repay you, I'd show her exactly what she is doing so that she is clear in the fact that you're onto her. I would also suggest that when you go grocery shopping you make a list beforehand of your needed items, split the list, and when arriving at the store, she gets a buggy, you get a buggy, and each get the items on your perspective lists, and add in any items to your personal buggy that you may just want. Then check out in separate lines. If she is bored in the store, then this should solve the problem. That's a really good idea, thank you. When my husband and I go grocery shopping for our big shops, we will use one cart to get everything, but then we go to self-checkout and get two registers right next to each other and put the cart between us. That way we can just grab what we already agreed to getting and split it that way. And we almost always come out to similar costs as well. It definitely helps us and then neither of us need to hassle the other to pay them back. But we also don't have that issue either anyways.